Welcome to another video. If you saw my video on the floor function, then you know exactly what I'm going to do with this one. The same strategy I'm going to take. However, in this case, instead of us losing um, a rectangle, we're not going to lose anything because it's the ceiling function. Once you're already in the room, it has a ceiling. Nobody's crashing down. And that's the only difference between a floor function and a ceiling function as we have here. Okay, let's get into the video. This time I'm going to start with the definition so we have an idea of where we're going. The ceiling of X is the smallest integer. So this is the minimum member of the integer set that is greater than X. So for example, the ceiling of 1.5 is 2. The ceiling of 1.1 is 2. The ceiling of 1.0001 is 2. You're just looking for the next integer. So if you have your number line, what you're looking for, any number you pick, you just want it to be on any of these marks that I'm making. This is one, this is two, this is three. It could be positive or negative, but the numbers we're concerned with are here. And you always go to the right, always go to the right to pick the number. So if you start here, then this is the number you're gonna take to represent everything to the left of it. Okay, so 0 0.2 will be represented by one. So the ceiling of 0 0.2 is one. The ceiling of 1.999 is two. The ceiling of 2.3 is three. The ceiling of 3.4, no, 3.7 is four. Okay, so that's basically how the whole ceiling thing works. Now that you know what it is, what happens if we're trying to find the area under the graph? Well, let's graph when, so let's say we want to, we have a function f of x, let's call it f of x is equal to the ceiling of x. What we have is any value you pick will have the value at, the, at this point, look, remember it is greater than or equal to, so when this is zero, this is just going to be strictly zero because zero is less than or equal to zero. Now let's move on. If you move slightly away from zero, it immediately jumps. So you're gonna have anything here is gonna have the value of, let's call this one, two, three, four. Let's just keep going like that. So let's make this five. So here, you're gonna have a graph where this is not defined here, but as soon as you leave this point, it goes all the way and this is defined. You see, as this is defined, this also is defined, but everything here has this property. So unlike the case of the, the floor, if you have the ceiling, you don't lose any square. You can see the square is immediately generated because we're moving to the right. So this is what we have. Once you go past one, you immediately have another box. So we can easily find the area under this graph. Look, this is the graph. You can move on to the next one also. You're gonna have this, and this goes this way immediately. And what is the height of each of these rectangles? Well, it is basically what the number is. So you can see the width of all the rectangles are the same, one, one, one. Just using this to show you that if you're going all the way to five, as in the case of this integral, you're gonna need five rectangles. And the height of these rectangles, or the, the height of each rectangle will be one, two, three, four, five. So that the area, which is the height times the base, is gonna be one. In the case of this, the area is gonna be two, look. The area here is going to be three. You keep going until you get to whatever you're d dealing with, right? Okay, so let's call this. Let's keep going. Go all the way to N. So what you're basically doing is adding up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way to N. Depending on how many rectangles you want. And that is determined by whatever this number is. 
So now let's just do the general one where you're starting from zero to n, then it means you're gonna have one rectangle if you're going to one, two rectangles if you're going to two, three rectangles if you're going to three, and n rectangles if you're going to n, and their areas are just gonna be the values of the numbers. So we know that the integral from zero to n of this. Why do I keep doing this? is basically the sum of all of these rectangles. If you're gonna add up all the areas from zero to n, what you're gonna get is going to be one plus two, one plus two, plus tap, 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 plus n. And we know what this is. This is equal to n into n plus one over two. So this is that part that you don't change anything. Nothing changes. Remember in the previous video for the floor function, I replaced n with x minus one. Here, n is x. Whatever it is, is what it is. You don't need to, you're not losing anything. It is what it is. So here, we can easily say that um, the integral of the, just like this. Why do I keep doing this? dx is basically x squared plus x over two. I just replace n with x and that's it. No rectangles are lost. And that's it. So let's come back here and we're gonna say this is equal to the integral from one to five of um, five dx minus the integral from one to five of the floor function, I mean the ceiling function dx. Okay, we know that this is gonna be 5x evaluated from one to five minus, this is going to be this, x squared plus x over two, over two evaluated from, let's, let's put this in this kind of, uh, from one to five. So here we go. This is gonna be five times five, that's 25 minus five, that's 20. 25 minus 5 minus, let's go here. If you plug in 5 here, it's going to be 25 plus 5. No, 25 plus 5, that's 30 divided by 2, that's 15. Minus, if you plug in 1, it's going to be um, 1 plus 1, that's 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay, so what's our answer here? This is going to be 20 minus 14. Ooh, that's weird, huh, interesting. So our answer is gonna be 20 minus 14. Interesting. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living, bye-bye.